All right, so here I am in the 2020 Supra. I put about 6.6 .6 miles on here so far, and overall, I'm loving this car. There are many good things about it. A few things that bother me. Right away, the steering wheel isn't quite perfect, but this thing feels great. It feels like it has a good like 400 horsepower. I'm sure they underrated it a tiny bit. And yeah, this thing hauls the ZF8 speed, continues to be the best transmission ever. And I've got a beautiful day here in the San Diego region to try it out. Thing sounds good too. So uh, I'm taking a little trip to Hellhole Canyon Preserve, the place where I went on my first car review just over a year ago. We shall return there. Should be a wonderful drive. This car is really cool. The number one thing I don't like, it feels like a Camaro in that I can't see out of this thing. I can't see, <laughs> I can't see much of anything, but I can see just enough of the road to, to drive, I guess. So I'm gonna put it in sport mode here. It seems to liven things up and uh, definitely makes it louder. This thing makes such nice crackles and pops from the exhaust. It sounds like the, the Focus RS that I, that I drove about a year ago and it sounds awesome. Oh, I got a WRX over here. Maybe he wants to race. <laughs> oh yeah, it's an STI. Woo. So yep, I drove about six and a half miles on some relatively boring roads to get over here. I just wanted to get a feel for it. And yeah, it's got great power. It, uh, <laughs> I'm loving it so far. I can't wait to get on some, some more fun twisty roads and open this thing up a little bit more. This particular car has wonderful carbon fiber accents in here. It's got this great carbon fiber all around the, the shift surround area. Oh, oh, there's the STI. I gotta get up by that guy. This, I've got a cement mixer in front of me. That's annoying. Second gear. zone <laughs> oops so like I said I don't like this steering wheel it's just too thin in the wrong spot it just does not have a good nine and three grip overall the shape of it is strange I don't know why they why they went with this wheel I'm assuming the BMW Z4 has a, a much better BMW style wheel so I guess they can't be exactly the same right so I don't like the wheel the seats are they're very good they don't have a ton of bolstering, but they have uh, just enough to hold you, but not squeeze you in a way that some people wouldn't like. So overall, I would like a more aggressive seat, but these are decent, and I'm sure they'll have uh, different versions of, of the seats as they go on here. It's very quiet and isolated in here. I'm talking loudly, but I don't have to. Definitely well insulated. Feels, feels pretty good. Feels like a proper grand touring car, which is what this car is designed for. Touring around enjoying yourself and comfort with pretty good sportiness, pretty good power. And overall, the car looks looks pretty good. Um, I guess I was thinking about it last night and the, and the word cartoonish just comes to mind somehow. It, it almost has a, a cartoonish look to it, like a, like a group of kids designed a car. But when I see more Lexuses rolling around, it looks a lot like the modern Lexus lineup, so it makes sense. Oh, flashing red light, that's always confusing. Let's give it a little gas here. Ooh. Yeah, I've got some wheel spin, but uh, the traction control manages the wheel spin really well. It, it just barely lets you uh, break them loose. It lets you haze the tires just a little bit. This has enough power where I'm not that concerned about wearing out the tires within 100 miles of driving it. The M5 was just a tire burning machine, but this, this has a very good amount of power. The car weighs about 3,400 pounds, and yeah, it's got a great power to weight ratio. Woo! Yeah, it's eager to, to break them loose in second gear. I'm pretty impressed with the power in stock form. And of course, a tune and various upgrades will turn up the power just about infinitely. Well, you can certainly get an easy 100 horse before you have to add methanol and stuff, I would assume. So I'm a huge BMW fanatic. But one thing I haven't really experienced 
besides being a valet, is uh, all of, all of the modern BMW six-cylinder turbo engines. Uh, I actually had had an N54 that I parted out, but uh, I've never even experienced a fast N54 or N55 besides driving up streets as a valet. So this is the B58, a wonderful BMW motor. Something's vibrating in here. Something is vibrating. Hmm. Overall, the fit and finish seems really good in this car, but not perfect. I think I've heard a couple little noises. It has this rear cargo area with a little cover going across, and it seems to make some vibrating noises, which I don't care for, but that's okay. It's good that it has the little little uh, cargo area back there. It looks pretty spacious. I'm just putting my stuff on the floor because I'm lazy, but we'll check that out later. Woo! Pop, 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 pop. Yeah, the popping is fabulous. I like it a lot. So hopefully I'll be off these residential style roads pretty soon. The place where I'm going is closed because of coronavirus, but I'm hoping I can still drive up the road and at least, at least get most of the way there. Hopefully I can get all the way up there and take a photo in the same spot where I photographed the M5 a year ago. That would be nice. Yeah, I'm getting an annoying vibration back there, but it seems like it's coming from that little cargo cover. So that thing should be removed, I'd say. This car definitely feels really stiff, but it's, it soaks up the bumps pretty well. It's not, it doesn't beat you up at all, the left I wouldn't two say, lanes to turn left but it feels, East Valley Parkway. it feels great. The gauge cluster in this car is pretty sweet. You mostly just have the tachometer. For all I know, it's configurable, but you've got your tach and a small, hard to see, miles per hour readout. But this car is fairly new. The, the owner has owned it for seven months and he, he likes it a lot daily driving it right now. It's got about 5,500 miles on it. Well, it's about to hit 5,500 right now. For three quarters of a mile. Yeah, this amount of power is a lot of fun to enjoy uh, semi-responsibly. And uh, paired with the ZF8 speed, the 8HP, my favorite transmission, it is a, a wonderful, wonderful powertrain they've got here worthy of the super name, absolutely. And it's not like Toyota's gonna develop their own straight six uh, twin turbo beast of a, of a power plant all of a sudden. They've got other things to do. So it makes sense to have BMW do it. I mean, who did, who did McLaren talk to when they needed a V12 for the, for the F1? I think they considered Honda initially, but then they went the proper route, so. So as you would hope, if you hold the, the downshifter, it does a, a double downshift or quadruple downshift. There are just zero disappointments with this ZF8 speed. Besides the plastic paddle shifters, they feel cheap. They don't feel great at all. But here comes the fun stuff. I hope my camera doesn't overheat. I want to get this all on, on, on film. Here we go. Third gear. Oh yeah, the, the torque in third, 3000 RPM. It's fantastic. Oh yeah. Not enough to overwhelm you, but enough to have some fun, for sure. Woo! Keep you on your toes. It actually rotated just, just perfectly out of there in third gear. Woo! There's a tiny bit of a, a lag at the paddle when you upshift, which is to be expected. A tiny bit of lag is acceptable. Um, yeah, of course, it is, it's no dual clutch, but for the average person, it's more than more than responsive enough. And even for me, it's responsive enough. I enjoy it. And having that torque converter to to drive around town with is cool. Got to pop my ears here. Going up some elevation. Oh man, this got crappy. We've got a a dump truck. <laughs> some sort of a industrial vehicle going 10 miles per hour. <laughs> Hopefully they go away soon. I'm really trying to film something here. This guy has no canyon etiquette. Nah, he's at work. He's got to get that load to its destination. <sighs> at least I can look at the view. Beautiful over here. 
Last time I was here it was a rainy day, so this is nice. Oof, the sky is terrible. How long are we gonna be back here? <laughs> Guess I'll, even if I try to leave some room, it won't be much room. <laughs> five miles on this road. Let's see what we can do. The view out of this car, I'm getting used to it and I, I feel pretty good in here now, but I guess the price that you pay for a, a low slung looking uh, sporty little car is that you cannot see out of the tiny little windows, these little gun port windows. It's not as bad as a Camaro, but pretty close, I guess. <laughs> no, it's actually way less offensive than a Camaro. I can actually see up the, the above the door sill at least. <laughs> so that's good. But the main thing, I'm six feet tall and I have the seat adjusted all the way to the floor and I'm mostly just looking at the, the bottom of the roof. That's kind of a shame, but that's how it goes. Like I said, it's a, it's a sexy little car. It has a, a low roof line. You cannot have everything. This thing sounds so sick. Might as well make some noises while I'm back here in first gear. Got these walls on each side of me. Yeah. It sounds better than a, well, no, I can't really say it sounds better, but it doesn't sound exactly like an F80 M3 or M4. It sounds different from the S55. Of course, it's a different engine. If it had if it had the S58, that would be really cool, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but that's all right. Woo, beautiful out here. And caught back up. Damn it. Damn it, Bobby. The so one time I tried to make a car video in the last year, in the last six months, and <laughs> this guy has to move a bunch of gravel. But no, it's all good. Yeah, we're going 15 miles per hour at the most. <laughs> 12, really. But that's okay. I know that trucking is dangerous work. You have to watch yourself, watch your speeds when you're pulling a load. This thing makes great turbo noises. The airbox must not be very restricted. Yeah, lots of lots of nice turbo whistling and wastegate circulating valve noise but overall it, it gives you a really nice note out the exhaust it's almost uh, as it comes on it's almost VQ like you know the Nissan VQ sounds almost like a V6 but once you get into the into the RPMs though, it makes that smooth, smooth straight six noise, and it does sound it does sound really good. And I bet some sort of aftermarket exhaust would be even more fun. Although it's already damn good in sport mode. So <laughs> there was a, a fork here, the Volvo went to the right, but we're all going to the left. Woo! It just spun the spun the tire into third gear. That was sweet. Lots of torque from this thing. Well, they no, they claimed 335 horsepower out of this. So, yeah, I'm sure it's probably not making 400, but they claimed 365 foot-pounds of torque, and yeah, it feels fantastic. It feels very torquey. It's freaking great. Oh, here we go. Yes, yes. Yes, thank you. Hi, Mr. Truck. Hello, open road. I was saying it's laggy on the on the upshifts earlier, but no, it's it's only like a quarter second of paddle lag. It does very well. So we're, we're 12 minutes away from the from the preserve. Let's see if my cameras can keep going that long. Hopefully. Yeah, I remember this road now. So last time I was on this road, it was kind of rainy, and I was in the, the Dine and Tuned Stage 1 F10 M5 with upper 600s, 
horsepower output and that was crazy that was dangerous well it was it kept me on my toes but even in the rain this amount of power is just just great it's not too much power for anyone really very controllable not too scary I'm sure with a tune it would it would wake up like crazy but fourth gear roll on just great downshift lag isn't isn't too bad I mean the lag for up and down shifts is about a quarter of a second or something it's it's really not bad so what can I say about how this actually goes down the road as far as a car yeah this thing's pretty quick the brakes feel nice the brakes aren't very stiff they're not like a BMW well not like a traditional one they're not as stiff and intimidating as normal BMW brakes of course, I'm talking about a Toyota here. It's funny to look down and see the Toyota badge. <laughs> I'm like, what am I driving? A Tercel? The steering feel is pretty good. That's what I was trying to say. Um, well, actually, it's pretty numb. Let me see. The steering feel is quite numb, but pretty much every modern car feels about the same. So what are you going to do? It feels okay. has a decent weight to it. Not as much weight as... A BMW, it's got pretty, it's got light steering, but it feels good. This car is pretty small and pretty light, so it's pretty, it's pretty great through the corners. It's got a decent, it's got a decent amount of body roll, but I mean, just the same as most cars. Yeah, once you get used to the the ZF8 speed. The tiny amount of lag is no problem, and you don't mind at all. You, your brain anticipates it. Second gear here. Let's do it. Woo loss in third gear. Let's take it easy. <laughs> there could be cyclists out here. Or police. <laughs> this is definitely a hell of a good road. And the more aggressively you drive this, the more it pops and crackles. Modern turbo cars are so easy to drive, you just leave it in third gear, just spool up right out of the corner in whatever gear. Yep, I remember this turn. I did a lot of editing for this scene. The next <laughs> Paradise Mountain Road. Getting pretty close to the destination. So the owner has some sort of little emergency like roadside kit in the back there and that's sliding around. That's really irritating me, but hopefully you can't hear it on, on video. Hopefully the camera's hanging in there. Rear wheel drive is just so much fun. If you have so much power, it becomes a bit much depending on the type of car, but this thing puts its power down well. Gives you just a tiny bit of wheel spin to keep everything fun and help the car rotate but it doesn't get too wild. I've got this Chevy Silverado in front of me. He's been making decent time so far, keeping me from going too fast, but I kind of wish he'd go away. Somehow this does feel like a BMW in some way. It just does. Maybe it's just the, the wonderful straight six and the wonderful transmission. So the steering doesn't feel like a BMW. The wheel doesn't feel like a BMW. The seat, maybe. Impressive torque. It's really it's ready to break traction out of these turns in third gear. Yeah, this car is very good for enjoying without immediately getting in serious trouble. Hopefully. Whee! Yeah, it's perfectly predictable. Every modern car has a wonderful stability control system. They allow you to have a lot of fun, but keep you uh, keep you in check if they need to. Yeah, it'll, 
you can tell it'll get get the back end out a tiny bit if you want to. I'm not going to bother shutting off traction control. Maybe later a little bit just to see what it does, but it, it gives you enough leeway to have some fun. I think this is the only time I've ever driven, at least out on the roads by myself, the only time I've driven a two-seater uh, sporty car. Yeah, this, this car only has seating for two people. There is no back seat, not even a tiny like GTR or Porsche or BMW i8 style rear seat. There's nothing back there besides the large cargo area with the cover that makes noise. But it feels good to have only two seats. I'm impressed with this car. If, if a few little things were different, like the driver inputs and just a couple little things, it would be quite spectacular. Overall it is. I'm just nitpicking small problems. The fact that it has fake vents on the door and uh, the rear uh, the rear brake vent little area, it's all fake, but I mean I guess it adds to the look technically. The jury is still kind of out on whether fake vents are cool or not. I guess it's better than having no vent, but at the same time, <laughs> I'm just not sure. I guess I don't mind them until the plastic starts peeling off in 10 years and it looks extra fake. Yeah, I'm on a pretty bumpy road. This car is very well insulated. It's, it's a pretty damn luxurious ride in here. It's good ride quality. Yeah, it, it uses that little bit of body roll to uh, smooth out the bumps and give you a good ride. So it's a proper grand touring car, just as it's designed to be. The steering feel is a little bit too light overall. I wish it were just a bit stiffer. It may be configurable, but I'm not sure. It doesn't inspire a ton of confidence, but it's fine. <laughs> Third gear at 30 miles per hour, just spooling up and breaking them loose. Does this thing have a limited slip differential? I wonder. Or just BMW's version of uh, a good differential. I don't know. Take the next left onto Shiloh Lane. Shiloh? The dog. So while it is pretty isolated and pretty quiet in here, it's not that quiet. They could have used a tiny bit more sound deadening. But then again, I like to hear the exhaust with the windows up, so it's fine for me. I'm on a really loud, crappy road right now, and I can hear it pretty, pretty well. But then again, this is no luxury car. If this were an LC500 or something, then maybe I would expect a little bit more insulation. Well, I don't love the visibility now that I am getting used to it. I do uh, like the, the view out the hood, actually, for what that's worth. The, the curve in the hood here uh, is nice, makes it easy to place the car. What the? What the hell? Quarter mile, turn left onto Shiloh Lane. This thing spun me around for no reason. I'm gonna spin me around. Crunch! Just kidding. This car is good ground clearance. I checked under the front and the rear and no one has scraped it on anything whatsoever. Just a little curb rash. So yeah, this is a good daily driving vehicle. Good ground clearance, good ride quality. Oh yeah, here's the fun part. Here we go. Hot. So, 
I'm here at Hell Hole Canyon Preserve and got my photos, did my handstand and stuff. Talked to a couple nice people and they were very impressed with the car as I knew they would be. While not many people have bought, purchased these cars, everyone is uh, quick to compliment it or be impressed by it when they actually see one in the wild. So that's nice. So I'm going to get out of here. The camera finally did overheat right before I got to this spot, so I'm just going to film uh, film myself leaving at least because this little road over here is really cool. Maybe I'll get some cool footage. Who knows? So this doesn't have the traditional BMW gas pedal. Actually, it kind of does. Yeah, the gas pedal goes all the way to the floor. Do a little second gear action here. Guys, fixing the fire hydrant. <laughs> Thought that might happen. <laughs> oh. Wow, yeah, I, I hit that sand and I spun like crazy. But uh, I kept it under control. <laughs> that sand, it'll get you every time. That was the sand movie. Sand loves cars. I'm happy with the power levels from this car. It's enough power to have some fun test the limits of rear-wheel drive. Now I'd like to drive an F80 M3 or M4 and see how that feels compared to this. I'm sure it would, it would definitely have a little more power, of course, but it sound uh, similar but different. Wow. It's just so fun to drive a car that actually has some power and is rear-wheel drive and has the ZF8 speed. It's a wonderful combination they've got going on here. And it's a pretty short wheelbase car. I'll have to look up what it is. What, 107 inches or something? 106. And it's the car weighs just under 3,400 pounds, about there. So it's a it's a good formula for a sporty car. I did a good job on this. Yeah, the new Super gets a thumbs up from me. It's not perfect, but most people will love it. And even with the issues that I have, I still love it too. So. It's a very fun car, and just the fact that it looks really kind of radical and looks different and uh, attracts attention, that's good. It does that well. Ooh, loud. That pop in second gear. Just the sound alone is so much fun. The sound alone is definitely worth 50 grand or so. The thing feels good in the corners, of course. As you would hope it does. Feels neutral, feels fine. Feels like feels like it handles very well. But it's got enough body roll and uh, compliant enough suspension that it's not about to to bounce you off the road. So I like that. This road's pretty bumpy. What a beast! <laughs> Woo! Traction control officially cut the power on that one. <laughs> Got the back end out just a little bit. <laughs> yeah, this is a pretty quick car. It gets up to 80 just immediately, but it's not outrageous like the M5 or something with 700 plus horsepower. So it's a lot of fun, but not too much. All right. Anyone else remember this turn for my M5 video? Oh, come on. Don't pull in front of me. Please. <laughs> This guy better not screw up my plans. I'm gonna hit the gas right in front of the fruit stand. Don't go left, don't go left. Oh, great, fucking asshole. <laughs> great. I'm sure I can pass him at some point. All right, here it goes. Traction loss. Yeah, it doesn't really let you burn them in first. It, it holds back like all of the power in first gear, at least with traction control on, so that's kind of good. No need to burn the tires off. That's my goal today. I never want to abuse anyone's tires or take any depth off their tires, maybe just the tiniest bit. I've got this classic F250 in front of me, probably with the 460. Okay, good, here he goes. All right. 5 mile per hour speed limit. That's fairly generous. Overall, the on center steering isn't quite perfect. Something about it just isn't exactly what I like. It's a little too, uh, 
It's just too soft, too light. I'm getting to prefer BMW M cars with ultra stiff steering, but this feels fine, just a little too light for such a such a high performance vehicle. It's pretty numb, but it's all right. It's, it's fine. I hit a little bump back there and uh, broke traction as I went through the corner, but no worries. If I had one of these, I'd get a tune. I wouldn't want to necessarily void my warranty, but if I was tight with my service advisors, I'd, uh, I'd get a, a tune on this thing. In the first couple gears, it doesn't really need any more power. It's rear-wheel drive, but in the third and fourth gear, yeah, I could see where a little more power would be fun. Fifth gear roll on. Ooh, wow. The ZF8 speed gives you such good ratios that that helps you haul some ass, too. This is a great road. It's got a lot of imperfections on it today. <laughs> this guy in the Toyota pickup truck is doing everything possible to stay with me. He's doing a good job. <laughs> Must have the 5.7. This car is very confidence inspiring. Although I complain about the steering, the rest of it feels just great. Hello, officer. The power and the popping are a wonderful combination. I wouldn't mind even a little bit more of each. A little more power, a little more pop. Oh, here comes the good part. Look at this road! And there goes a cop, but the speed limit's 50, what? <laughs> the sign said slide area. <laughs> I know what that means. Oversteer. Ooh, a lot of rocks on this road, I don't want to go too crazy. definitely take some G's through the corners, that's for sure. I just keep getting on the power too much, having the, the rear end come out, but I'm sure the limit for understeer would be really high. I can't even approach it, apparently. These, this road is just too much fun. I'll, I'll get some understeer later on when I get into town. Let's, let's see the lag. Here's the click. like a quarter second it's not bad so back onto the normal roads no need to film out here i'm just going to try to street race some people casually and uh, just go about my day here's a little shade let's So I made it back home, had a fun time on the highway. This thing isn't as fast as something like an M5, but it's pretty darn fun. Pretty, pretty fun. So let's do one more exhaust clip while it's still warmed up and I'm in a parking garage. <laughs> there we go. What a car. Now time for the SAM score. Category, powertrain, transmission. The ZF8 speed continues to impress, though it does have some lag. Nine out of 10. Output, the B58 engine does well in stock or tuned form, but it's not as beastly as the S58. Seven out of 10. Personality, lots of turbo noise, engine pops, and wonderful straight six sounds give it seven out of 10. The pops actually sound like you're driving over steel plates at all times. Reliability. This engine is very new, but has a closed deck block and will likely fare even better than the N55. 8 out of 10. Category. Chassis. Capability. 
This platform seems very stiff, light, and well-engineered. 8 out of 10. Fun. This car is just the right size and places you almost above the rear wheels, adding to the fun. 8. Safety. The newest tech in IIHS designs provide lots of safety in a one-vehicle crash. 7. Driver inputs. The disappointing steering wheel, feel, and small plastic paddle shifters earn this car 5 out of 10. Category. Value. Maintenance. Though it's no Toyota, this B58 shouldn't require much besides parts failures and normal turbo issues. 7 out of 10. Cost of entry. At around $50,000 new, this car is actually a bargain for how special it looks and feels. 8. Long term. Though it's hated now, I imagine the small sales numbers will bolster this car's future collectability. 9. Fit and finish. Despite two small creaks, this car feels extremely solid and well built, especially the hatch and doors. 9. Category. Styling. Innovation. Tasked with replacing the all-time great Mark IV Supra, this car does it justice while also looking radically different from most designs. 9. Longevity. Though I enjoy it, the front end of this car seems like it may not age well, at least at some point. 5. Wow Factor. Despite the low sticker price and internet hate, everyone I met loved this car and noticed it, especially painted Arrest Me Red. 8. Personality. I love any car that dares to be different, and the Supra certainly does. This car feels very special to look at and drive around. 9. That all adds up to a score of 123 out of 160. Not bad for the first new Supra in 22 years. It also got about 14 miles per gallon while testing. Thank you for watching and happy motoring.